Hi viewers, welcome to Blood Test. Today we are going to see what are the common problems while running a laboratory on a daily basis, most commonly for the small laboratories. So come, let's go to the topic and see how all we can troubleshoot the common problems. The first one you see is the turnaround time. Usually small laboratories promise patients their reports on the next day. Don't do that. Running a CBC or running a glucose test, a liver function test or a lipid profile, urine routine is all going to take you a maximum of half an hour to 45 minutes. Make a turnaround time of 3 hours. Dispatch the reports at least by half a day. Whatever test you have finished, dispatch to the patient, send them an email and only the remaining test which you are outsourcing or which will take another day. For example, the TSH or any other hormones like prolactin, FSH and all, you release those reports on the next day. Suppose a patient is coming for a master health checkup and he has given you a list of tests to be done. What you do is, you whatever test you have finished, dispatch those reports on the same day. Only those which you are outsourcing, keep it for the next day. Don't accumulate your reports and send it on the next day. When you send at least partial reports on the day one, that will build confidence upon the patients. So what is the next important thing we have to see in a laboratory is or the credit or the cash settlement. Make sure accounts is maintained on a daily basis. And you have to write all which you have spent also. Expense registered on the income register has to be maintained on a daily basis as the owner of your laboratory or you know the manager of your laboratory. Make sure every day this accounts note is maintained and signed by you on the end of the day. The third one, labeling of specimens. If you see most common and the most you know which needs to be avoided the mistake needs to be avoided is labeling the specimens. So why does this occur? See uh, sometimes a 27 age is interpreted falsely interpreted uh, as 75 years because of the writing habits of male is wrongly interpreted as female. This and all uh, maybe in a laboratory from your side, this might be a small mistake, but on the patient's side, it is a very huge mistake. Writing a male for a female or a 25 for a 75 is a very big mistake and this needs to be avoided at right from now onwards. So what can be done? You can barcode your system, you know, barcoding all your uh, samples is not very costly. If you spend 10,000 you can barcode all your samples once the patient has registered you can take the print out of the barcode stick it on this tube and then you can withdraw blood this will reduce the mistakes of labeling the samples so the next common mistake happens is the collection tube errors Sometimes uh, for an EDTA sample, you know, a serum sample is taken. To avoid all these mistakes, what you have to do is you have to create a chart or a poster. Take a printout of it and stick it in your phlebotomy room or your collection room. So that every tube, every sample is taken properly on the right tube. See, sometimes people would give you a D-dimer. Taking a D-dimer in an EDTA or serum doesn't mean anything. You cannot run the sample itself and the test is very costly. Make sure all the samples, at least what the important samples which you cannot make any mistake, which needs, you know, special attention, at least those are put in a chart and stick on the collection room so that none of the technicians go wrong about the collection. And one more thing is educate all your technicians, uh, hire a person to educate them on what are the latest advances and what are the tubes needs to be uh, taken on a, a daily basis and which all cannot go on the wrong way. The next one is the staffing for collection. Being a small laboratory, you cannot afford, uh, some people cannot afford keeping a separate person for collection. You might be having just one technician, you might be sending him for home collections also. Just running with a single technician, it would be difficult for you to take a lot of home collection samples. In that case, what you can do is you can assign, you know, there are uh, in uh, many of the urban cities, there are separate team of people doing only the phlebotomy services. Make yourself, you know, 
tie up with one of these phlebotomy services and you know take home collections or else one idea which I can give you is if there are you know some 5 to 10 small laboratories in your area you can all form a you know association and you know you can appoint a single or a two persons for phlebotomy collection alone for home collections alone then you can pay him monthly of 15,000 rupees and he will also get uh, you know uh, incentives for collection for each collection what you can do is to all together you can you know sms him or you know you can uh, inform him the prior day itself what all collections are there for the next day all 10 of you when all 10 of you are forming an association and you know you're hiring a single or a double per, uh, two persons for just doing the home collection phlebotomy it is it is really going to be cost effective and you all can grow together your business and what is the most important and what is the neglect you know a uh, thing a mistake you do in a laboratory is maintaining the stock see if you see sometimes your technician might come and say that there's no urine container in our room so we would have asked uh, why didn't you say me then uh, prior week itself you know he would have informed but but we must have forgot it so how to overcome this you have to maintain a daily stock register a weekly stock register and a monthly stock register make sure the daily stock register is signed duly by the technician or the uh, you know person in charge for all the stock maintenance and it is also signed by you so what practice do we follow in our laboratory you know for these things what we do is we have an assigned time for signing the registers so all the registers comes to my table at exactly at 1 pm the stock register the cash register the credit register the you know the test register everything comes to my table and it has to go back to all the respective departments at 1 30 so that 1 to 1 30 what i do is i just check on and i just sign it if today i miss uh, something tomorrow i can't see it that the unit tube culture i mean like the urine uh, container is less and the order needs to be placed immediately like that you have to maintain a stock register and make sure the stocks are available in your laboratory at least one week priorly and not at the verge of the moment this is going to really you know uh, uh, have a chaos in your laboratory which can be avoided easily by just maintaining the stock register and by duly signing it every other day uh, i hope i have given you a glimpse of what are the common problems and how to troubleshoot them if you have any other problems you're facing in your laboratory on a daily basis you can write on the comment section below or you can you can share your comments at pathlabstartup at gmail.com. Thank you. See you tomorrow with another video.